come with us now, if you dare, down a rickety staircase into a dank, dark basement. What awaits the Saturday Night Freak Show? <laughs> Hey, thanks for listening to the Saturday Night Freak Show podcast, where a podcast comes your way every Saturday, whether you're ready for it or not. We're going to talk about some movies. Maybe you've seen it, maybe you haven't. Uh, but anyway, we're in a total quest for total world domination, and all we need for you to help us out with that task is to go on over to wherever you found us and hit that like or the subscribe button. That's probably the most powerful thing that you can do aside from writing us a review all of that stuff helps us get found by other folks like you and we want to reach other folks like you to become the fastest growing podcast on the internet and maybe the galaxy we don't know i mean why not shoot shoot go big or go home is what we say anyway these are the internet radio superstars holly michaela john and I'm Colin, and tonight we watched a movie which was chosen by Michaela. The hell? <laughs> <laughs> like I said last week, I didn't say it was going to be fun. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be interesting. Yeah. Uh, what did we watch tonight? We watched the 2004 remake of The Stepford Wives. Oh, directed by Frank Oz. Ah. Yoda how movies, himself. How Come many on. movies has Frank Oz directed? Quite a few, and some good ones, too. That's what's surprising. He's, he's directed several movies that I really love. He directed What About Bob and Little Shop of Horrors. Uh, yep. uh, Indian in the Cupboard. Yeah, Ooh. Muppets Take Manhattan. Didn't he do the last like mm. Marlon Brando movie? Was it The Score or something with De Niro? He might have. He did The Dark Crystal, too. He's like He's done a lot of cult movies that are really yeah. beloved. Hmm. Obviously, he was a puppeteer. Yeah, yeah with, like Goldfinger. Uh, yeah. He was with the Henson Company. Uh, in the beginning, he was Miss Piggy, right? Um, and several House other... Sitter. Yeah, he's I like a puppeteer. love that movie. <laughs> he cameos in every single John Landis movie. You remember him what did, as the... What did, he, um, what did he direct after this? Because I feel like I really liked whatever came after this. Captain Google is on the case. We're going to have an answer. Death and... at a funeral? That's it. I loved that movie. The British version, not the remake. Oh, yeah. I was going to say, I think you're the only person who liked it. No, no, no. The, but, the, okay. Yeah, the one that Frank Oz did with, with all the British cast. That one is okay. really funny. Peter Dinklage is in it. It's great. Yes, okay. Yeah. All right. But in uh, 2004, Frank Oz thought that he can improve on the Stafford Wives uh stepford wives we covered on this show actually you can go back and listen to our stepford wives episode where we did the 19 was it 75 classic yes. yeah horror film horror sci-fi film uh we're going to spoil mm -hmm. that movie obviously as we talk about this movie and compare and contrast um this movie was written by mostly, was it mostly contrast yeah <laughs> Mostly contrast. That's that's fair. Mostly contrast. What was the writer on this one? Because didn't he do like Adam's Family or something like yeah, that? Yeah, it's Paul Rudnick. He did both Sister Acts and Adam's Family movies. Oh. Right. Just this started, obviously, that's on good. our chat, we talked about um, that there was like some uh, Danny Elfman, Tim Burton-y feels to it. But I definitely got an Adam's Family vibe. Um, and I'm pretty sure they used the music in this in the Adam's Family or vice versa. I guess the Adam's Family came out first. Tim Burton was actually originally attached to direct this. Who was? Okay. Tim Burton. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah this movie feels movie. like Tim Burton's Tim Burton's adopted son. Yeah. Like it really does. He, he he doesn't have the kookiness in his blood, but he's trying. Yeah. Yeah. The music was by David Arnold. He was the guy who did all the Roland Emmerich movies. So from Stargate, Independence Day, all that. I think he did all of them. And then he became the de facto James Bond composer. And I think he's done all the Pierce Brosnan and uh, Daniel Craig movies. Um, but man, he's doing his best Danny Elfman impression. Plink, 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 like constantly, like no matter what's happening. Yeah. Yep. Um, so uh, have you guys all seen the original Stepford Wives? Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, and so this one was my first time watching this one. So, I mean, that's uh, the thing. Me too. Yeah. Was it? Helen, you go to the theater for everything and you didn't see this in the theater? No. 
Now, I didn't go to see this in the theater. No, no, Colin would not go see this. Uh, did audience? Colin could see this movie from a mile away. Yeah, because I remember there was. Uh, Michaela is obviously going to fill us in on this, but I mean, when when you say Stepford Wives 2004, I remember stories about a production out of control. Pinnacle director and stars who all went fucking nuts on him and reshoots, 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 and a budget that ballooned. And it was like uh, called one of the worst movies budget. of the year. Yeah. What? <laughs> and it was like a summer blockbuster. I remember the ad campaign for this movie and how aggressive it was. Like, I don't think summer, like, this is not a summer blockbuster. Just, just because it's expensive doesn't make it a summer blockbuster you know no this is not like a movie that hits all four quads right of the uh, movie strategy oh. that's why it's like it's not a summer blockbuster kind of movie um i mean so where do we begin i mean i guess we gotta i mean do you go back to ira levine wrote this novel called the stefford wives right this was at the height of the feminist movement but i think the book was criticized for being anti-feminist at the time that it came out um so i mean your interpretation of it may uh <laughs> may vary so, but did, he so had, did they just take all those parts for this movie is that what happened well i mean so it kind of feels like the first movie does feel to me like a paranoid uh feminist uh you know thriller right or cautionary tale i mean basically it is actually like a chilling movie with really yeah. great like thriller tense moments yeah yeah yeah, because it plays the idea, which I guess you could say is like, maybe it's just a goofy idea, but I mean, it plays it straight and there's a mystery of you don't know what's going on. I mean, obviously mm -hmm. now at the time that this movie came out, the idea of the Stepford wife, I think, has become part of the cultural lexicon. It's a noun now. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you get Stepforded or a verb, I guess, right? A verb, a verb. yeah. Yeah. You get Stepforded, like that's a, that's a word now. Yeah. What's it mean? Uh, if you ask this movie, it could either mean you're a robot or you have microchips. It depends on what scene you're watching. <laughs> That's very true. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah so the maybe, um, maybe they have that machine from like Superman three where they, they put people in it and they come out as really fucking can, scary robots and shit. Can we never talk about Superman three on the show ever again? Come yeah, on. I, I wasn't even here for that episode and I don't even ever want to talk <laughs> Neither about Superman three. Was I, I felt I missed out. I I, 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 and you know why? Because wonder woman 1984 reminded me of that movie way too much. Oof. It really did. Oof, am I the only person here who didn't hate Wonder Woman 1984? I mean, I didn't like yes. it, but yes. I didn't hate it. Yeah. You were the okay. only one. Only right. one. Yeah. My heart is not full of vitriol for Wonder Woman 1984. It's about expectation, like, Colin. It's all about expectation. Yeah, maybe that's it. I had no Colin expectation. Colin still likes DC, <laughs> so that's a part of it. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I saw the Justice League. I kind of liked it. We're not All right. Talk about so, that, uh, <laughs> four hours I sat there, my ass got numb. All right. Um, <laughs> All right, so Ira Levin uh, also did Ro Rosemary's Baby. He also wrote The Boys from Brazil. He also wrote Death Trap. We did Death Trap on this show. Um, but anyway, so uh, so he wrote the book. They made a movie. Uh, after the movie came out, which I don't think was like a huge hit, but it became a cult thing, and then it was followed by a bunch of TV sequels, including The Revenge yes. of the Stepford Wives, The Stepford Children, The Stepford Husbands. And now, finally, here we are. We go back to the well, and we remake the Stepford Wives. I'm so, a little intrigued by Stepford Children and what that movie looks like. I saw that lie. one. Uh, that one I remember I saw. It was like an NBC Sunday night movie. When so it was like a children of, sort of like a Children of the Damned. I was going to say, is it like a TV version of Children of the Corn? Uh, it's like a TV version of Disturbing Behavior. Uh, that's basically... Uh, yeah. uh, <laughs> got it. Yeah. Um, okay, so I mean, what do we... So in this movie, so they've changed the central character. Catherine Ross... Uh, she was, um, I can't remember if she had a career in the original she was movie. A photographer. Yeah. Yeah. She had been a photographer. She was going to be like, that was her dream. I can't remember. And she left it in order to follow her husband uh, into suburbia. I don't remember it that closely. Okay. I can't remember either. Um, this one makes a big change because it makes, uh, Nicole Kidman like a TV network executive. Yes. Right. A, right. a reality TV network like executive. the biggest TV network executive in the world, though. Like the, yes. the way they talk about her and her influence is yeah. cult like. Yeah, yes. for sure. Yeah. So why don't you, you tell us about uh, some of the shows that she's cooked up? We were introduced to her in this opening scene where she's like giving a 
whatever. And she's talking to other like television. It's like the, it's like the upfronts. Yeah, it's like yeah. the upfronts for a TV network. And she's it, uh, yeah. giving her presentation on the uh, uh, the new shows that are in order. If you've ever watched Thirty Rock, it's every fake show they've come up with on that show in this yeah. movie. Like I was like, wow, Thirty Rock was ahead of its time because. <laughs> That's basically what's happening in this movie. It's true. Um, but there's like a Meredith Vieira, which dates this movie, is hosting a like a who wants to be a millionaire type thing. But it's like uh, like a quiz show for couples. And it's it's not funny. It's supposed to be. But yeah, it's it was not. really and mean. <laughs> <a> mean one. <laughs> what was the second one? And the second one was like. Like temptation I can do better, island, but they're all prostitutes. <laughs> that, OK, that one. Funny. Because when as soon as they started going, like, I'm telling you, yeah. and they stayed on the no for ten days with thirty prostitutes. I'm like, wait, what? <laughs> like the way they go into the satire of this moment, I thought was great. But it's just this moment. There are seconds of laughter in this movie. It's great, <laughs> but only seconds. Yeah, I feel like I had I had moments of laughter with the the gay friend. I'm not gonna lie, he was funny. I did too. Yeah, he was funny. In the I, in the beginning or in the actual movie? What? In in the beginning. Oh. So okay. So I'm I'm I can't Or in the movie. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Because I on the whatever, what was it called? I can do better. They have like they take a couple out there, right? And the whole joke of it is is that the guy has like a prostitute and he's like, you know what? At the end of it, I chose to be with my loving wife, but she had like a, a bunch of uh, male escorts and uh um porno actors and she's like i'd rather go with them and have a new life boom i can do better <laughs> yeah and What's so the interesting th about this is that it's it's 2004 so like reality tv is still pretty new at this point in time but they're acting like it is like stupid and lowbrow and it's this trend that's gonna go away and it's like it is still here 17 years later it's not going anywhere. <laughs> right you're watching you're like oh they have no idea do they <laughs> yeah they think they're being really smart here and it's just kind of like yeah it's just normalized to us now like uh -huh. anything stupid like this could be a tv show now yeah yep. still stupid and lowbrow but now it's still yeah um but this movie has no business thinking it's above that oh the, yeah no i mean it's yeah. not like, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> it, like it, this scene kind of makes it be like isn't this so stupid and it's like well but this whole movie is just as stupid as right the concept like, you're, really shows. Stupid. you're stupid all of you like this is dumb. <laughs> yeah. i'm stupid you're stupid not you in the movie i know like, that's the movie really being crazy. petty <laughs> but this is all the brain trust of the Nicole Kidman character, right? She's responsible for coming up with these shows. And uh, because of it, uh, the guy who lost his wife in the show shows up at the upfront meeting and tries to kill her. Um, this, of course, leads to a bunch of legal repercussions. And so she's fired from her job. And it's like, OK, so initially and again, it can't help. I would be suing them so quickly. Holy shit. Yeah. Wow. I was the victim of a attempted assassination. And you're firing me. What the yeah. fuck? Yeah. Massive lawsuit. Maybe that's how they they afforded that beautiful house in Connecticut. Yeah, there you go. I was wondering, like, how you get fired from your job and you can still move into oh, a big ass yeah, house. This is like the this is like the Megan Kelly uh, severance package. Give them thirty million to go away; they'll be fine, yeah. right? <laughs> um, but um, comparing and contrasting, I guess, like, where are you going to put your focus? Right? It's uh the the Catherine Ross character, and see, I don't know, maybe this was just like in the seventies, right? They were kind of making her seem like every woman. You know, I mean, that's how you buy into it or how you relate to it. Right. Uh, yes. <clears throat> this one changes that. And it's like she's a person who's come up with these fucking horrendous, awful, uh, soul crushing, uh, you know, um, TV shows. I'm like, am I supposed to empathize with this person? She's a soulless, well, awful corporate, you know, I mean <laughs> <laughs> I, I agree. I agree with that, but I disagree with you saying that she's every woman. I feel like the Catherine Ross version is the modern word, the modern woman, but like the seventies version of the modern woman, because it was, yes. it was subtle, you know, like we look at her now, we're like, Oh, that's just a normal woman. It's like, well, not in the seventies. Right, like she yeah. was You're a right. feminist. She was an independent, like, her, like she had a career, you know, she was different. So like, this is, 
we're just so extreme nowadays that this is our version of the modern woman, you know, in like movie yes. movie terms or whatever. You know, we just we're so extreme now. That's the difference. Well, having yes. been booted from her job, her husband, that's Matthew Broderick, he's also in this movie, uh, elects to move her Is he though? to the suburbs. <laughs> What, do you think a robot replaced Matthew Broderick's performance in this movie? Yeah, like 20 years ago. <laughs> Maybe sure, yeah. No, probably like 30 years ago, actually. I mean, can been we just... Sold I, us for longer than I've been alive. Kind of has. Um, can we just say that, they, that uh, what, they did not cast this movie well? I don't think. Maybe no. they did in 2004. I don't know. It doesn't come off well now. What's the, well, certain, I mean, a lot of this movie What's doesn't. the tone for you're going for? But, but but the casting could be based on a tone, right? Because it is like a superstar. Nicole Kidman cast. is not comedic. He never has been, never will be. She got some moments in this, but no, she's not the one. Like it's not. She doesn't have the. I was gonna say, I'm not gonna say she doesn't have the good look for it because she does as the like the CEO powered like woman of the early two thousands. But it doesn't work as someone you can relate to. It works for the look they're going for, but I don't care about this. Like you said, Colin, like, yeah. am I supposed to care for this person? So she's got the look, but personality is not drawing me in. I, I feel like I've never been able to relate to Nicole Kidman in anything she's ever done. <laughs> right? Yeah, like, I'm not saying she's, she's a this, bad, I mean, I she's she's a bad a, actress. I think I'm not saying she's a bad always, actress at all. It's just, I'm like, I, how do I relate to Nicole Kidman? I can't. Like, well, I, but I feel like her characters are always these extremes, you know, yeah. like, and I don't know that they're supposed to necessarily be relatable. There are these like extreme exaggerated versions of people, you know? Yeah. And like, she's just not a comedian. She never has been. I don't understand why she, she was cast. In she movie looks movie like comedy. Mm -hmm. She looks like they exaggerated a person. Like that's kind of Nicole Kidman. She looks like an exaggeration <laughs> of a person. Kind of. Maybe that's her. That's what people like about her when she's acting, but that's kind of what she feels like. Like think of a person, but just go off a little bit. I feel like that's she's. Nicole I feel like she's. If a police sketch artist was sketching a really beautiful woman, they'd come out with Nicole Kidman. Like she kind of looks like an actual person, but still a drawing. Mm -hmm. You know, she's the real life Jessica Rabbit, is what you're saying. Is the... well, no, shut up. No. <laughs> How that's dare different. you? Okay. <laughs> look, um, look, I don't want to fuck a cartoon. I'm just saying that's insulting to her. <laughs> well, um, so anyway, they moved to this little uh, quaint town of Stepford. It's a gated town, not a community, a gated town in this movie um, where everybody has these gigantic mansions and uh, all the women are apparently trapped in the 1950s because they all wear sun hats and sundresses and they're out in their front yards tending to their gardens and all this stuff. Um, can you gate a town it, when it's not, you know, in the 1500s? I think it's called a compound at that point. Or cult. <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, that must be, yeah. that's what they're obviously, Waco. they're trying to draw on that imagery, I think, um, because it's separated from the outside world and they're able to do whatever they want inside this town. Um, so pretty early on this movie, um, and this is maybe where I couldn't follow it. It was like, Things were happening happening very abruptly. Um, she loses her job. Next scene, she's had a complete mental collapse. Matthew Broderick is there to reassure Terrible her. Terrible editing. We're going to move to it, the I suburbs. Mean, they move to the suburbs. They really are moving fast yeah. off this first start, especially after the assassination attempt. Yeah. And it was like, it's like the, whew, the, wasn't that crazy that the, happened two seconds ago? And the very next it, scene after that felt like all of a sudden, like Matthew Broderick wants to get a divorce. I'm like, what? How? You just took her out to the countryside, you know, and you're consoling right. her because she had this breakdown. Now you're like, I want a divorce. And what was his grounds for like wanting that? I, oh, I couldn't even follow it. it my head like switched so fast. I was like, wait, what? <laughs> I mean, this movie's been cut to ribbons, at, you know? Yeah, she's at high high powered um ceo woman that's never around and he's not feeling love that's it yeah it, it be, he said that in that scene or that obviously comes out later i think he has like a whole spiel i think like he, he got some of that across in that scene okay. yeah he said something yeah. to the effect of like your kids don't even know you because you work all the time or whatever like yeah. he said that early on and then later he has that terrible monologue Wait, what kids? Where did the kids go? I forgot about the kids. <laughs> yeah. okay, the there kids were kids. 
That's yeah. funny. I forgot about that. I'm fine with the kids not being in it. Like, I mean, me too. Like, I'm not missing it. anything. <laughs> it's just funny that they absolutely disappeared. Well, it does, um, because I was like looking at the movie going like, okay, are we going to make like some kind of this new version? Is it going to make a critique of, uh, you know, the idea that, you know, now we automate everything, right? Because they do have like the 2004 version of the uh, Echo and all this other, you know, a home automation. And they got the little robot dog that comes down and you're like, oh, there's something creepy going on or not creepy, but just weird going on in Stepford where they are. Some of the worst CGI I've seen in a long time. That was bad. It, it, it looks like a gummy bear dog. I don't know if that makes yeah. sense. Yeah, but like it yeah. did. I know it's supposed to be like an Android, so it's not supposed to look realistic, but even still, even for that, it looks terrible. Like, yeah. yeah. It's just use a real dog and tell us it's a robot, you know? Yeah, exactly. I don't understand why they didn't do that. Save some fucking budget money. Like, that has to be cheaper to get a real dog than yeah, CGI this dog, made, right? And it would have made yeah. more sense later on when we see the inspiration of the robot dog. Yeah. Um, she makes a couple friends in the town because, I mean, obviously, well, Glenn Close is like the, uh, she is the point of entry, right, who gives her a tour <laughs> around stepford you know where she this is the new community where she's going to have to try and fit in immediately matthew broderick's off to the men's association or whatever where the guys hang out and play video games and do whatever the fuck smoke cigars um and uh, yeah and uh and that's led by christopher walken right he's the uh the head honcho over there um, With the terrifying dye job in this movie my god what did they do this man's <laughs> hair I feel like I've said that about Christopher Walken's hair in most movies he's done. Orange. Yeah. It's like it's, it's something else. Like, does he actually have hair? Does he have a wig or does he just uh, dye his hair all the time? I, I don't know. <laughs> it's a- I honestly, there's no, I don't think you could, I don't think you can get his look twice in a row. I think that's his hair. Like Maybe. just the way he's somebody's got that Gumby swoop to it sometimes. Like he's got some weird <laughs> shit going on. I think it's all him though. <laughs> yeah, I remember reading an interview with him, I think in like Premier Magazine at one point, the, the interviewer kept said that like as they were talking, they like met him for lunch in you know New York somewhere and they went somewhere, Christopher Walken was always like pulling on his his forehead. And uh, the guy's like, what's going on? He's like, you know, I'm going to keep the, the hair. He's like, are you losing your hair? He's like, no, but, you know, I don't ever, you know, I don't want it to go away. So my hair, the, it's the, the blood growing. <laughs> yeah, the blood flowing through my forehead. Uh, so maybe it worked. Oh boy. Maybe it worked. And there you go. This is real <laughs> hair. Um, it's crazy. <laughs> I mean, he has looked the same for crazy. like 40 years. So, you know, yeah, good yeah. for him. Is he still in movies? I haven't seen Christopher Walken in a while. I miss him when he was in a movie like three times a year back in the 90s. Mm. Uh, I think he started doing a lot of comedy, so that's why you wouldn't have seen him, Colin. (laughs) There you go. Probably. You're absolutely right. Because he was in Hairspray, right? Yes, he was. Yeah. For some reason, this movie reminds me of Hairspray. I haven't seen that one, but I don't know what. Maybe it's because we're coming off of John Waters last week. Yeah, this I would say it's more eyes. akin to Serial Mom than Hairspray. So there you go. John yeah. Waters should have made this movie. John, John Waters did. We watched it last week. That's the better version of this movie. I mean, he <laughs> really he, he made the better version of this. Yeah, he got the the satire and the comedy down much better in that movie. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he really did. Shit, no wonder why I'm so down on this movie. We just watched a really good version of it last week. <laughs> <laughs> really good version, as in it's going after some of the same themes. What are you saying? I think it's going yeah. after the perfection of that 50s suburbia yeah, that the, we always going seem to be going the, back to. Yeah, the nuclear family and the American dream. Like, it's satirizing all yeah. the same things. I mean... The who, thing we were always told up to yeah. grow up and want. The perfect family, the nuclear family, you know, wife, two and a half kids and a dog, all that good shit. <laughs> um so well anyway, she uh so she meets a couple of people. These are the normies, right? Who haven't been stepforded yet. This is mm. uh Bet Midler as an author, basically taking the Paul Apprentice role from the original, and Peter Bart as uh well, this is where we got like a gay character here, which you didn't have the first time around. Um, I can't remember what his profession was. And because his husband has also moved to Stepford. So these three become kind of the, uh, you know, there's something going, you know, they realize that there's something going on in the town. They initially, um, 
I think Nicole Kidman originally is like, let's just give this Stepford thing a shot. And she tries to go to the book club where like all the women want to read the new, you know, cookbook, which that's a similar scene to something in the first one, isn't it? I, I, yeah, there's certain. I, I, yeah, the first one doesn't stick with me a lot, but there were similar scenes to that. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I mostly just remember the climax of that movie, you know? That's what everyone remembers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, there's uh, some similarities here, but then this movie shoots on past that with its own, like, three or four endings after that one. Um, But different elements uh, in this movie and... Do we do we reveal like what is happening to these women? Well, that was my that's the next thing I was going to bring up. Um, this movie they have like a welcome to Stepford dance or whatever, right? Uh, and a at square that, dance well, because yeah, uh, it's eh, wholesome I fun. There's no bodies. I can't. I can't. Did you guys have Steph to do square Korea. dancing in grade school? I was just going to yes. ask that, but no, I did not. You did it? So no. so much square dancing. Oh, so much square dancing in grade school. So I remember the ballroom dancing. dancing in high school, but you know. We didn't have to do ballroom dancing, but yeah. we had to do square dancing. Like, a lot this, of it. This whole situation is so cringy. I could not live in a place where like everyone's expected to participate in shit like this. No way. You're no. like, I can't you, live in a you, world where it's perfect. I would run screaming from this if this <laughs> happened to me. I, there's no way. Now I know they're being like it's a heightened environment because of this movie, but this is insanity. I to, wonder, see, to see this and just stick with it. I will say I kind of dug the like summer block party carnival that was going on. That was kind of cool. <laughs> I'd be down with that. Right for a day, like they're <laughs> like this is life now. Yeah. Like and every you know day, all there's this- parades. You know all this shit's mandatory. You know you can't sit any of it out. That's the thing, you know? Right. Otherwise, their their smiled heads go a little crooked. They're like, <gasps> you guys, like, I'm not, like, for realsies, that's an actual thing. When I was in that cult when I was 19, we had mandatory fun day. I'm not kidding. Mandatory fun day. Yeah, but these Stepford wives want to be there. That's the thing. They want to be at Mandatory Fun Day. (laughs) It's all part of the cult brainwashing. Uh, When you're told that's where you want to be, that's where you want to be. Yes. Um, (laughs) But I guess my point was that this scene, like, is pretty early on. We're still in Act One of the movie, and they give away that Faith Hill, who's also in the movie, malfunctions. And Christopher Walken, when we're introduced to him, comes in and gives her a and stops the sparks from flying out of her ears. And so we've given away right now and 20 minutes in that the movie has robot wives. Is this because yeah. everybody knows that's what the movie is about? Yeah. It's yeah. gotta be. They, yeah. They had to go a different angle. They're like, everyone knows what the original Stepford Wives was. We have to do something right. new, which. Right. Like, and everyone, transport. like you said. It's become part of the lingo at this point. So, yeah. you know, there's that expectation going into the yeah. movie anyway. I do have to give them credit that they tried to do something different. Okay. True. Uh, can I say how much I love uh, Faith Hill falling over and how loud that slam was <laughs> to where not only did it make Nicole Kidman go, Jesus, like, that's what I did, too. Like that, whatever that is, that sound effect, it makes them sound like such dense, heavy robots when they hit. Little like again, the seconds of hilariousness are in here, and that's one of them. But again, seconds. <laughs> what was the? I ha- is this the only thing that Faith Hill acted in? Like that was so random to have her in this. Mm. So I'm gonna random. look that up because I'm curious. Yeah, she was never so in my, she, she my other sphere shit of influence. <laughs> this did she, did, did when, she do um, other stuff? Like obviously, she was a singer, but did she do other acting? I don't think she did. Captain well, Google so is on the case. Right I'm looking it up. Uh, but been this in may Hallmark been, movies, really. I would. Right. This may have been around the time that uh, Tim McGraw was also acting a lot. Friday Night Lights and shit like that. Yeah, he was trying to get into. I mean, he's in that terrible fucking movie, The Blind Side, Academy Award winning Blind Side. <laughs> True. I hate that. Oh, she was. Oh, uh, all filmography actress in 12. Ooh, okay. Let's see what this is. How many of those are late night shows and music videos? TV series, TV series, TV series, Stepford Wives. Uh, oh, and in Dixieland in 2017, and that's it. All right. Well, way to go, Faith Hill, for you know, your agent catch some gigs. Um, he barely has lines in this movie. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Well, she's a Stepford wife. But she's kind of the perfect Barbie. Yeah, I was like, they they cast her because she's unbelievably beautiful. And that was all they needed. Yeah. Very true. 
Well, in fairly short order, it seems like, uh, you know, the friends obviously start becoming weird. They've been Stepforded. Um, the um, Bette Midler character has a hoarder house, which I know disturbed a lot of the freak show uh, participants was, here. Yeah, this is the most terrifying part of this movie. Yeah, <laughs> this is the real horror. There was yeah. clutter and a mess. And then, but then when she becomes Stepforded, She's got that place all spick and span. She's awesome. I mom. didn't see that coming. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Shock. Shock. And That's, uh, I, I, was stuff like that not so apparent back in 2004? Because that seems like they show they walk in, they show her house. It's a huge mess. Do you not automatically know? Like, especially if you're going and knowing separate wives, that it's going to be clean at one point when she gets switched. Well, this is kind of my first question, thing I thought of right? I, if you're, I feel like you got to know. If you're telling you the know. audience, if there's an audience going in who doesn't know what's going on, right? It's been ruined by the Faith Hill scene. It's like, oh, there's robots. You know, you can put, unless you're an idiot, right? You've put two and two together. <laughs> you know, that's what's going to happen. We show you a cluttered house. She's going to become one of them. Um, so, yeah, you're just kind of walking through this thing going like, well, I know what happens next. When are we getting to that? Mm -hmm. I know what happens, you know, even if you, ha I'm saying, even if you haven't seen the original one. And uh, the other dude, the Peter Bart character, he ends up becoming a, uh, a candidate for the Senate, right? They want him to be, his husband wants him to be a, a senator. Like his husband day. wants him to be, I think, less gay, I think is kind of that storyline. Yeah, this. his stepfording is he's acts like a straight guy now, I guess, right? Yeah, or like the most like, like he feminine acts like or whatever. Buddha judge now. Like that's the it's the high just like he acts like a uh I think according to this movie, a more normal person is what they that's put it. That's a good towards. analogy, Sean. Good analogy, what, Pete Booty. That's, that's what well, I mean, that's what it feels like. But just because, you know, um I Pete Judge has a stick up his ass, and that's what it kind of feels like this character does too. Uh well That's I, all I have to say about Pete <laughs> Judge. I'm sorry. We're done, we're done with that. I was gonna let you keep going with it. I want to see where else oh, no. take that's it, all so. my material. I am dry. I am all out. Um <laughs> so maybe this guy could become the transportation secretary in the future or something, but he becomes uh, like, a, yeah, Colin he's keeps up for, going. He's up. There you go. That's all I had. He's a, he's <laughs> up for the Senate run. Like the very next day, again, very abrupt. It's like, boom, yes. then this is happening. Boom. There's like a whole party and they're unveiling like him as a candidate for Senate or a candidate for the Senate. And I'm like, now how does this work? Right? Like, can these Stepford robots like leave Stepford and actually, you know, function in right. uh, the global stage or at least the national yeah. stage. How do they? How are they affected as they go out into the world? I'm very curious because yeah, we range? are caught in that right. <laughs> what's the right, range? Yeah, the control they, center, you know. Yeah. Well, right. How tall is their the, antenna? The husband will always be there, but I'm like, he can't go to like everything that the senator would go to, right? So I don't. Whatever. Um, so anyway, yeah. this leads, uh, you know, Nicole Kidman has several, uh, attempts to leave Stepford. This is her idea is I got to get out of here. Right. It was a sane idea. And, uh, then she's gaslit by her husband. Like, yeah, I, it was real, real up and down with this movie of like laughing at the one point and then utterly hating it the next. Well, it just seemed like I didn't, you know, like, um, Matthew Broderick, buys into this like really easy when they bring a uh, at the men's club they bring in one of the separate wives and uh, uh use her as an atm which like am i the only person that's horrified at the thought of like money being inside your mouth not only yeah they put the yeah. credit card in there first right. but money is so <laughs> fucking dirty i was like as someone that used to I mean, work at a bank yes i was horrified well, I, I mean, it was it was digital money up, uh, up to a point anyway. Yeah. Once the guy actually took it, I saw that it still had her like saliva. On saliva. The, yeah. Because yeah. like, we got it in HD. Sure. God damn it. And we were able to see that. And I'm like, Ew. Colin, Colin, lick a dollar right now. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> Come on. No. Okay, we're in the middle of a pandemic. Go lick a dollar that you yeah. got. Go lick you know, a from dollar. In the Go to the nearest liquor store. Get a dollar and lick it. I dare you. Yeah. Uh, allowed to be a Patreon no. tier, Sean. You gotta make people pay for that content. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, that's very true. Up, up that's at least the fifteen dollar mark. Yeah, I'll lick your fifteen dollars. I don't do anything on a. You send us the fifteen dollars. <laughs> Sean said it. He's doing it. There you go. Volunteered. 
Patreon. Uh, okay, so um, this is a goofy fucking scene. Like, I was like, what the fuck? You know, yeah, he, he, he does. He puts the credit card in her mouth and money comes out. I'm like, what is the fucking point of this at all? Except, I mean... That well, makes it. That makes an awesome wife. That. She gives you money like out of her mouth. Like, but who yeah, put the money really, there? Like, what the fuck? <laughs> they're really putting a lot of. They're really betting a lot on the end of this movie, and hoping that that emotional turnaround really works out for them. What are you talking? Because about? if it if it doesn't, like when they when they reveal at the end that uh, um, uh, you know, uh, well, are we at the end yet? I don't want to. I don't want to give it anything away quite yet. <laughs> Um, but they're really like, because the end does do a switch and they're really relying on that payoff emotionally, I think, in order for this earlier stuff not to be incredibly, incredibly insensitive and misogynistic. Like they have to rely on that ending of no, of course, the things, you know, uh, everything won out in the end. And I think they're putting a lot on that. I think you're probably right about that, John. Yeah. But I have is... questions about the money coming out of her mouth, though. We need to do <laughs> okay. this a little bit more. Okay? Oh, it... yes. All right. Okay. Yeah. So where's your dissertation? That... Where's your uh, slides okay. and your bring it on? <laughs> that posits there's like cash storage in her, right? Yep. Right. So did that mean a Brinks truck comes once a month and fills her up or what? Or I had that for walking, printing counterfeit shit and putting it in her? Like, I had that same thought. Working? I had that I, same I, thought, yes. Michaela. I want the Truman Show behind the scenes of how they get restocked with money every week. Yeah. Did the like husband, that, just, that's what I want to say. Did he just put the money in there? So like, this is a good kind of parlor trick that I can pull off at any point in time. Or it's does he put his own money in there? The mattress. He just puts it in his wife. Yeah. That's just where I save my money in my wife. Yeah. yeah. And eventually I can make, I can just make withdrawals and bam. <sighs> I like to imagine a Brinks truck pulling up to Stepford like once a month and filling up all the wives with cash. Though. I yeah. love that image. I love it. You met, all right, all right. The new guy's first day on that assignment. He's like, all right, so where's this going? We're the ATMs. <laughs> wait, wait, what? <laughs> One of them bends over and opens a latch where the money goes and shit. It's like, <laughs> oh, okay. It, it, yeah, or I mean, Krista, like, it would be a nice thing if they like really wanted to add to this like idea of them controlling this whole world, like they kind of reveal at the end. Like, make it Christopher Walken's printing counterfeits or something, you know, to really kind of keep them all under his thumb, you know? Yeah, the money mm-hmm. only works in Stepford or something like that or, you know, whatever. Yeah, it's got his face on it and shit. Yeah. Yeah, because they're all, you know, like all the, the guys at the men's <laughs> in club. In God, they're, we trust. <laughs> they're all supposed to be uh, ex-Microsoft and uh, Apple or whatever employees, right, right? right? AOL, that was a funny joke. Yeah, is that why that was slow? see there's some zingers in here there's I'm, some like that was complete total i was that was yeah i didn't mean that at all uh so <laughs> the um all right so basically yeah i mean that's what we're talking about right that they that the, the well, okay well first of all i didn't get matthew broderick maybe you can help me out with this all of a sudden like a that he was so agreeable to it like right away like girl comes out and money comes out of her mouth and he's like that's awesome. He had some zinger. And he's then, like he's like Broderick and everything. He's completely nonplussed by what's happening around him. Yeah. So I, did I miss a backstory where like somebody that he knew was like telling him, you know, like, hey, you should come to Stepford because we got this thing going this on. This is here. and he knew that. This is what, what I was, was wondering. I was wondering how earlier, how early on in the movie he knew about this. I think he had some inkling because it looks like when the money comes out of her mouth, he is surprised by it. So I don't think he knew that they were being turned into robots, but I think he knew something. I mean, he is the one who leads them to Stepford and everything. So he's got some inkling of something. Right. Going on. But I would like to know what that inkling or where that inkling came <laughs> from. Like, where I would what do. was the source? His motivation for anything in any given scene is completely unclear and different from scene to scene. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Is that because of the massive reshoots this movie underwent, Michaela? I think so. I mean, this movie was cut to ribbons several times and it did a test screening that did not go over well. And then they did even more reshoots. So and then there was constant infighting on the cast. Everyone hated working on this. I guess Nicole Kidman and Bette Midler, especially with Frank Oz, were always butting heads, I guess. Everyone fucking hated working on this. I feel like it's like an entire cast of divas, though, like cast and, and everyone. Right. There's some big egos on this set. For sure. Oh, and boy. I. I 
I guess like what's their motivation to agree to this, right? You know, like aren't they all kind of above this movie at this point? Money. Yeah, that's true. Colin did the, the fingers. <laughs> yeah. Colin did the money fingers. <laughs> um, well, I mean, I guess. I, well, what to, well, what year is it? It's 2004. I mean, are they, is this like. This is a big movie. And what what is it is it's a ninety million dollar budget. Yeah. I mean that's inclu- probably including reshoots and all this stuff. But they were really going big for this. I heard it was one hundred and twenty eight they... with the reshoots. Or was that? Oh, was it? Oh, maybe office? it's more. That, that's funny, Colin. They're trying to bury that information because everything you look up says okay. ninety. <laughs> all right, maybe I read the uh, wrong I saw thing. No, I mean budget one hundred and ten million box office. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um. Yeah, I mean it would. It, uh, it just seems like. Uh, I think it's a they're like so many stars it can't fail yeah and i think the ending if i remember correctly the original ending of the movie did try to go with the creepier ending of the ira 11 novel in the original movie but test audiences hated it and so frank i said well i'll fix it and so he went and shot like a, a whole i mean that whole extended ending has to be added on because the end of the original movie with her walking through the grocery store is there you know? yeah it's like that's yep. it so okay to get there basically yeah matthew broderick agrees that his wife would be better if she was an appliance if he turned her into a robot this is the horror of the original stepford wives is you know the idea that men just want uh submissive subver- sub- subservient women uh who will cook clean and uh are great at sex right Actually, we're yeah. almost there now because now they, we have real dolls, right? This is the future. We're going to put all these uh, stuff for wives this is probably going to come true. Uh, just give it like this five is, that's, more years. That's the direct to video <laughs> Stepford Wives remake, I think, where they're just like, look, they're so real. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm in love. So, Colin, before we jump to that, can we talk a little bit about the, when Bette Midler like, reveals that she's been turned, right? Um, because this scene was super cut to ribbons and if you go on youtube you can find the whole scene and i watched it and it's fucking insane so this was the most effects heavy scene in the movie okay so set me up for this this is the scene where nicole Ooh. kidman yep. comes over and nicole kidman okay. comes over finds out Bette midler has like been stepforded she her house is clean she's dressed you know very donna reed and everything and um Nicole Kidman is like really put off by it she's acting strange she does the scene from the original movie where she stabs her she doesn't say the line you think she's gonna say they completely skip that um and Bette Midler just keeps going on like nothing's happening um she puts her hand on the flame on the the stove doesn't react then she starts showing off all her functions and she literally says like look what I'm capable of and like her hand turns into a whisk um her other hand turns into a uh-oh, we just lost audio. You, you, you muted, you muted. You muted. Okay. There you're back. What did, what did you last hear? <laughs> yeah, whisk. Her hand turns into a whisk. Okay. Her hand turns I'm into a whisk. Nothing ha- well, I'm glad nothing happened because you said that and I was like, no, come back. I need to know more. <laughs> okay. Her hand turns into a whisk. Her other hand turns into a squeegee and she like cleans the windows. And then she talks about her... There might be like a vacuum cleaner coming out of her mouth or something too. Then she talks about her sex functions and she's like, this is what happens when I orgasm and her head literally pops off and then comes back onto her body. And then she says something and then like post coital or something. And then she opens up her boobs and pulls out two Bud Lights and says, would you like a Bud Light? And then turns into a lawnmower and starts mowing the lawn. <laughs> <laughs> oh god wow. so now, like, what, Colin, you should really put, yeah. Colin, you gotta post this clip this week Apparently on social media so. so people can see it. it's nuts and it's what like it is been. all effects like it's crazy special effects i had it was the most expensive you know effects budget in the movie and then they see, cut it that, that's the remake we needed we needed them to go hard no no, we yes. didn't. No, they. Yes. <laughs> like, yes. Colin, if you're going to be a comedy and you're going to be goofy, really go for it. You That's know, you can't I mean. hold back. Do well, it. That's true because this movie was painfully unfunny. Oh, sorry. It was just me. I, you guys, yeah, there was a couple little, little laughs uh, that you had. Seconds, uh, seconds, Colin. <laughs> seconds of laughs. Um, seconds of laughter. 
Yeah. So, well, I mean, but this is the other thing too. It's like the, the, they change kind of the, you know, where she goes to the club and all the guys are there and you're like, Oh shit. You know, and she finds out that yes, a body has been made of her. Uh, and that Matthew Broderick is, so there's a dialogue that happens that I don't think happened in the original movie. It was pretty much already decided that like he was going through with this. Right. Uh, but in this one, he's given an opportunity and she's explaining why a real woman is better for you than the doll. But he's already like, I don't know. It was like the appeal is uh, on him is completely lost because I guess Christopher Walken's like, come on, Walter, come on. And they, yeah, he, that's literally all Christopher Walken's doing. It's like, come on. Yeah. And then Nicole come Kidman's on. like, well, I guess this is what you want. And joins him in the thing. And I'm like, what in the holy fuck is going on here? She's not going to put up any kind of, she's so beaten down at this point, apparently, that she's just like, well, this is what he wants. So I'm just going to go through it. They've already shown her the uh, helpful video of what's going to happen to your brain uh, when we do this. So they're taking her brain and putting it in a robot body? No, no, that's not what they say, Colin. This is where the whole movie, I mean, as if it already wasn't working, but it really falls apart here because in this little Jurassic Park animated video we get, (laughs) they say that they put microchips in your brain. That's what they say in the video. And then when walking is taking Nicole Kidman into the other room to do the process, a robot version of herself on the table. But they yeah. did in in the in the cartoon video that you were talking about. They do say that they go on to make physical improvements to them. So that it's suggested that some that their body, whatever body it is, is altered. So they don't specify if they altered the the original body or a replica body. But they do say there's other alterations made. Yeah, I mean we saw that with Faith Hill make a bigger but. But the the, char- the problem is the characters later on use the word robots. That's the problem. Like, is it microchips in your brain? Is it robots? Like, they so have a full replica of Nicole Kidman's body, and they're saying it's just microchips. In so it's got to be microchips in your brain, and the brain is transplanted into the robot. I, I just love that technology is that you just place a microchip on the brain, and you're good. Yeah, like yes. that's all it takes at this time. Well, then that's I, that's wonderful technology. But I wonder, like that's kid, that's kid logic because that's how I always used to think <laughs> everything worked. Like, oh, you just put one in there, you'll be, <laughs> yeah, you'll be fine. But I wonder if that was part of like a reshoot because that would negate the whole scene that you said the Bette Midler character was in, where she actually starts forming, you know, utensils and shit out of her hand, right? Right. It has to be that this whole microchip robot thing is just a bunch of random reshot and original scenes kind of mixed together. And I think they just kind of either didn't give a fuck or didn't think we'd care enough to notice. Yeah. They're probably exhausted by that point. Yeah. So they don't even know if it's a robot or uh, uh, just a controlled person because this would play into the new ending. So the, the, the original movie would end right about here. We do get this scene where like robot, Nicole Kidman, the perfect woman, right, is walking through the grocery store shopping uh, with everybody else, Glenn Close and everybody Mm -hmm. else. But then the movie keeps going. And uh, so um, this left me like completely baffled. Right. But basically, there's a big soiree where everybody's attending and Matthew Broderick wanders down into the basement you know he gives everybody the slip so you can down to the basement which is where they make the stefford people and he destroys all the programming how uh by tapping on a keyboard thing just randomly he did the same thing that i do when i try to play video games just mash all the buttons yeah the, yep. this to me is it, it, it's it's the epitome of this kind of entire movie at this point like just hit the buttons until something works or doesn't work like it's yeah. it, 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 like yeah. you Colin said baffling that this is what they rely on that he just goes down there and hits numbers and until it all explodes yeah well the basement kind of yeah. did it was like okay yeah. this is the west world basement where they have it's like uh i don't know like these clear uh, glass sheets with the people's like their imprint on it. It's like a, a computer, clear computer screen or whatever. Mm-hmm. But he, mm-hmm. so he destroys all the programming. And so upstairs, all the women are like, boom, magically returned unharmed to their original state. Right. 
where they can look around at all the men around them and go, you, what have you done to us? And then, of course, everybody turns to Christopher Walken because he's trying to like, you know, no, this is making the perfect thing. And then somebody hits him on the head and his head flies off and you're like, oh, my God, shock ending. Uh, Glenn Close is actually the only real person in Stepford, and she created Christopher Walken. Why? She wants to play God, basically. If she could talk about it for 10 minutes at the end of this movie. What did she talk about? <laughs> she was like the world's best neurosurgeon and had contracts with all these software companies. And it sounds like, okay, that sounds great. So why was that not enough for you? Sounds like yeah. you were pretty accomplished. Yeah. So, but this is weird because it takes the responsibility off of the men, right? You're right. Yeah. Sean. This is kind of like the, well, there's another movie that we were talking about that uh, it's an ending that would ruin it, but had a similar kind of thing where it's like, you're, you're making this indictment, right? Of uh, men who think this way. And then this movie like pulls back from it and says, no, it's actually Glenn Close. She wanted the perfect world, right? And so she created yeah. the perfect man who would go and talk to the other men and give them the ideas that she gave him to create these perfect women. I'm like, what in the holy fuck? What are you saying? I mean, like, <laughs> Makes no what, sense. <laughs> what is the point of this? I just Makes I couldn't, no sense. couldn't understand. Like, if it's satire, what's the target? <laughs> well, I mean, they took away their target after she took credit for the whole thing. Like, they take they immediately take away the bite of their movie. Yeah. Which is why. This whole ending, I mean, this ending kind of shapes everything. It's, I mean, it's... Oof. My my oof. theory, my theory is that when she caught her, because in her, in her storytelling, she talks about how she caught her husband with her research assistant having an affair. And my theory is in that moment, she totally lost her shit. And she just, like, became a recluse and started watching lots of, like, you know, leave it to beaver reruns. And in her mind, she was like, wouldn't it be perfect if that's how we could all live just with chiffon and garden parties? So this is, so this is WandaVision. Is what you're <laughs> I was going to say it's yeah. her welcome to Marwin is what I was going to say. Is. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. That's how, that's how I imagine it happening. So, so is she rich or is she, she's got to be right. Like the off this entire, uh, this You've entire the time she started. She had. She she started small and just started working her way out of the town. Like that would almost be a more interesting story. This it, this. Go ahead, John. I, I was gonna say it might be a more interesting story to see how she got to that point. But also, I never want to see anybody from this movie again. So <laughs> <laughs> this reeks to me of a producer choice. Like they were like, we got to one up the original. We got to do like a crazier twist than the original because everyone's expecting that. So then they're right. like, well, what if it was her all along? And I also think casting Glenn Close played into that too. I would like think they were like winking and nudging, like get it, because she was in Fatal Attraction. Like I think that's a big part of it too. Yeah, I like to think it is. Maybe going back to that like Hollywood blockbuster, you got that four quadrant, right? They're like, wow, we just alienated all the men in the audience with that ending. Men aren't going to come see it on the second weekend, so we're going to change the ending. So this one like goes after Uh both targets. In which case you yeah. hit, you hit none that way, um, so yeah. without the courage of your conviction. So then there's a, a second ending of the three, and in the second ending we find out that the uh, re reformed is not the right way to say it. They uh, they they regained their consciousness, right? Nicole Kidman, Bette Midler, Midler, and Peter Parter on the Larry King show because now they've all profited off of this, uh, you know, experience that they had. They've exposed it and they've written books and. They're getting rich. What? So, so they watch, so they test screen this and like, this isn't going to work. What do we do? Let me make a phone call. And they're just like, Larry King <laughs> is going to fix this. Trust me. He'll do it. He doesn't turn down. Somebody, any had, somebody had to call in a favor and be like, Hey, Larry, what you doing? And, uh, uh, uh yeah. Uh. So it turns out like, well, what do you do with all the men of Stepford, right? And they're like, well, we're rehabilitating yeah, they're still fucking them. Assholes. Yeah, well, we're rehabilitating them though. Back in Stepford where now they are doing all the shopping. That's the third ending. We get to see all the guys doing the shopping in the grocery store where if they stop and talk to each other, then they're told, "Keep shopping." So our security camera footage is the last shot of this movie. Yeah. Yeah. What the fuck? So are they in prison or house arrest? Like, 
did their wives leave them and they're just like in this weird Connecticut prison? <laughs> they're or... just constantly wandering around a shopping center. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And the whole joke is like, if I don't bring home this kind of brand or whatever, my wife's going to kill me. And then, you know, like, okay. Like, it's like, it's, it's like we, right. It's like we never, they're on both sides of it and we yeah. never get out of this, the, like the husband stereotype. Like the, that's it throughout this entire thing. It's fucking weird. Yeah, the Did movie. I love that monologue uh, Matthew Broderick gave about how accomplished his wife is, and that's a problem for him. Yeah, right? yeah. Are you fucking I don't, kidding me? This is the fucking weirdest. Well, yeah, that, that, you're right. That was his motive. Was like, you know, you you women are, you know, you're, uh, you know, high performers and your your CEOs and all this. What does that make us? <laughs> we're nerds was, or we're slums. He or was whatever. literally complaining that he married up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was yeah. gonna say, you shut your fucking mouth, Matthew Broderick, <laughs> and you take that perfect wife. <laughs> Jesus. I wish, he, I wish he just would have been like, yeah, I settled. I know, like. What of it? it is, well, she, um, she it, do you of, think this is? She kind of even did when he was like, he was like, "You're good at everything, and what do I get?" She's like, "Me, like, yeah, hello." Like this should, like that should be that should have been like the feminist moment of the year if this was made like now. Just like you get me, yeah, that's a, that's amazing. Now, do you, uh, do you think they cast Matthew Broderick? as this character to soften the blow yep. of making him yes. a villain. It gotta yep. be he's, right. Yep. He's like the least threatening man that's ever been on screen. So yeah. 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 <laughs> he's an asexual least threatening man I've ever seen. Yeah. yeah. You might be right. He's soulless and, and, and he feels like a soulless shell of a person to me. So it yeah. tracks that he would be a robot then. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he, yeah. I actually was wondering if that's the way this movie was going to go like earlier. It's like, Ooh, but I uh, thought so too. <laughs> like if they made if he was the robot. Yeah. Yeah. That, but that's why I called the Christopher Walken thing. I'm like, mm, I don't know. I'm thinking that, uh, yeah, they're going to, they're going to pull one more uh, rug out from underneath you. Um, yeah. Let's keep doing that. That'll make for a good movie. Yeah. Okay. Please. All right. Well, <laughs> I mean, now I guess you're waiting on pins and needles to find out if we're going to recommend this movie to you. Somebody is going to do it, right? Because, uh, you know, <laughs> we, we got to find out who's it going to be. Is it going to be me? Is it going to be Sean, Michaela, Holly? Let's find out. But first of all, yes. we're going to answer some of your mail. And in order to do that, we're going to have to call our mailman. And his name is Igor. Bring us the mail. Masters, masters, the mail. I've got the mail. So many letters. Our followers are rising, rising. Why, thank you, Igor. Can we get some microchips what? for Igor? What comes out of his mouth? They'll just dissolve. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, it is like it's like acid up there. Yeah, yeah it wouldn't be good. Yeah, yeah. well. Uh, we should probably, I mean, obviously you want Igor to bring us your mail. And in order to do that, all you got to do is comment on some of our social media. You can follow along on Facebook. Facebook.com slash Saturday Freak Show. Or Twitter. At Sat Freak Show. You can email us. Saturday Night Freak Show at Yahoo.com. Or you can follow along on Instagram at Saturday Night Freak Show. Uh, so first of all, uh, a little bit of housekeeping here. Um, have we ever determined like an official name? For our fans, because Grant Parrish and Travis Legler got into a little thing, and they proposed a couple. Would you like to hear them? Sure. Obviously, yeah. Because okay, we're trying, you know, because when you write out freak shower, it kind of looks like freak shower. So we, we can't oh, call ew. them freak showers. Uh, right? I don't like that. Ooh, the freak. That's what happened in the freak shower. So Grant proposed Holly's helpers, Sean's sadists, Colin's creepers, and Michaela's mournful mariners. But Travis said we should all just be Sean's sequel submissives. There you go. Of course. Of course. This, yeah. I was going to say, this all favors me, so I'm <laughs> for it. No, wait, what were they again? Say them again, Colin. Hol Holly's helpers. Slowly. Slowly and in great detail. All right. So MF Mad of the Saturday Night Freak Show. Well, then we get it's recorded. You can play it back. Uh over oh, okay. and over and over again. Ooh, to your yes, heart's content. Yes, there That's we right. go. Uh okay. so uh MF Mad, the keeper of the Saturday Night Freak Show Wall of Fame, informs us that we have inducted two people onto the Wall of Fame off of this movie. In order Gotta to be Faith Hill. <laughs> 
unfortunately. That gotta be that classic yeah. Oscar winning actress. Faith what Hill. was the other movie she was in? Okay. So you gotta be in three okay. movies that we cover. Faith Hill, unfortunately, this is her first strike, right? But Nicole Kidman. <laughs> yeah, it is. Has now made it three times on the freak show. She was in days of thunder, which we did Stepford wives. And according to iTunes, the most listened to Saturday night freak show episode eyes wide shut. Uh, Our hosting service uh, disagrees with that, but iTunes, it's always like eyes wide shut in the top 10. I'm kind of surprised the others is not on that list. We I'm haven't done it yet. Me to hear yet. We yeah. need to BMX bandits or whatever. We need to get that in there. Get <laughs> some, better, some better movies for her to get on the wall. Uh, we were also inducting Christopher Walken. Uh, hey. Last, he was in uh, Stefford Wives. He was in True Romance, and he was in The Sentinel. Oh, yeah. There you go. Bring back The Sentinel. All right. What is he? What was he in the set? He was the detective. I don't think he said much. It was like, him oh right, the, yeah, mm-hmm. right, early role. Yeah. Um. Okay. So about tonight's movie, The Stepford Wives. Teresa Ann writes in and says, "You're in for an idiotic treat." <laughs> there you go. <laughs> uh, Michael Whitaker said he thought the decision to make them all Muppets was bizarre. <laughs> 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 I think I'd actually like a Muppet remake of this better. Yeah, that was a good one. But he says, seriously, though, I've caught a good portion of this movie, and I still don't quite know what they were going for by making a comedy. It works better as a creepy body snatcher type horror movie. Yeah. Uh, Travis Legler wrote in. He said, I remember how standardly bland Matthew Broderick is in it. I remember thinking when I saw it that it had some heavy hitter talent, but the flow of the film was kind of boring. I can understand if someone loves this film because we all have our thing. My favorite movie is Maximum Overdrive, but I remember falling asleep a lot trying to wait, watch this all the way through. So maybe you should stick with the original. Ooh. Yeah, may, may, maybe. I want to meet the person who this is their favorite movie. Uh, we're going to find out tonight. Look at Holly. She's laughing right now. Okay. Wait, don't spoil it. Robin Linneman Silverberg says between this movie, Bewitched, and The Invasion, I hereby ban Nicole Kidman from any and all remakes from this day henceforth. Thunder back oh, to yeah, Australia. Yeah. You're yeah. deported now. Yeah. Damn. Uh, Grant Parrish says, oh, I was just talking to a friend about this movie. I saw it in theaters. I hadn't seen the original, but I had heard references to Stepford Noun, and I sort of figured it out that it was an artificially perfect version or noun. You know, the original is like a horror movie. This one, I guess you would call it a comedy. Mm, I guess. Uh, it thinks hey. it is, but it's not funny. There you go. It thinks it is. Mm. That's a good. Two weeks ago, we watched a movie called Urban Legends Final Cut. Grant Parrish wrote in about that one, too. He says, it feels like you're burying the lead if you don't mention that Anson Mount was in Crossroads. Sorry, Britney Spears' iconic classic, Crossroads. That's right. There it is. We didn't mention there that. There it is. Uh, he says, yeah. my only high school. I think school... we mentioned it on there. We, Did we? I think so. We mentioned it on uh, there, Ma- just not Ma- in Ma- a Facebook Ma- post. Oh, okay. I was going to say, Michaela mentioned it. Yeah. Okay. She would not let us forget. Well, uh, Grant says, my only high school date was to see Crossroads. It was left the theater. The girl said, with no hint of irony, I just hope this, being Crossroads, doesn't beat a walk to remember for too many Oscars. Wow. Wow. Can you imagine what a day in the life is like inside that girl's head? <laughs> it's all bliss. It's, I mean, I'm, I'm laughing because <laughs> I've seen both of those movies so many times because my yep. friends loved both of them so much. Mm-hmm. Well, about so urban legends, uh, Mark Harrison says, "When I was a kid, I came home from." I came home one day to find my sister had rented this movie and watched it with my mom. I was told I wasn't allowed to watch the film because it was garbage, not because it was violent. (laughs) (laughs) That's just good parenting. Yeah. yeah, I'll keep it. I'll keep it away from my kid. This one's just for me. Mm -hmm. Uh, Carson Snar thought that scene in the mile high club at the beginning of urban legends was terrible. Uh, Peter Gatt said, I really can't remember anything about this movie. And Dennis Peck said the ending, that's the, the twist ending, which we won't spoil for you here uh, on this show, but the twist ending of Urban Legends Final Cut doesn't make a lot of sense. It comes out of nowhere, and I love it. The twist ending. Uh, that was, that is, was a twist uh, ending. It's really anti-teacher. It's really anti-teacher. Yeah. That ending. It is. All right. So now we're going to tell you whether you should watch the remake of The Stafford Wives. We're going to start tonight's program with Holly. What do you think of the Stepford Wives 2004? Mm, mm. So, mm. I, 
don't know. I wasn't like offended by this movie. I there's something I mean, I don't know. There's something nostalgic about it. I don't know if it was just because of the time that it came out. I or maybe it's the people in it. I don't know. I don't know what it is. It might be the music because like, it reminds me of Adam's Family and Tim Burton. So maybe that's the part that's making it nostalgic for me. That's probably it now that I think about it. Um, but yeah, I wasn't like offended by this movie. It wasn't as, I don't know, it wasn't as idiotic as maybe we're making it sound, but it's not a good movie. It's it's terrible. It's It's incompetent and it's, it's not funny at all, but well, don't yeah, say that. It's, a, it's a weird, it's a weird movie. It's a weird I'm movie. I'm going to second that. Man. Not funny at all, Holly. I'm with you in that corner. There you go. <laughs> okay. I mean, I don't know. Seconds. Seconds of hilarious. There, yeah, that's that's the thing. Like, I, I chuckled a few times. I'm not going to lie, but it's it was a painting crazy. again. It was so fleeting, and looking back, I can't really tell you what the parts were that I laughed at. So, it, to me, it's not funny. It, it just because I chuckle doesn't mean it's funny. But yeah, I don't know. I'm not like I said, I'm not offended by this movie, but it's not a movie that anyone should watch at all. Like, there's not really any saving grace to it. You know, there's it's not a good remake. I I, I will say, and I'll stand by it. I appreciate that they tried to do something different because everyone is very familiar with how the original ends or the premise of it. So I, I get that they, they needed to do something different. So I'll give them props for that. But otherwise I can't really give them props. I'm, I'm kind of disappointed in Frank Oz. I like a lot of stuff that he's done, but right. Yeah. Like I, I, I know you know, I saw those Frank Oz. I'm like, Ooh, he's done several movies that I really like. Like, but I think yeah. he said in interviews that uh, he had like too much money. And he, you know he was not responsible with it. Like they he basically gave the bent bank to, the will to make of the this producer. movie. Yeah, he yeah. he bent to the wills of the producer and didn't stand by any of his own choices or instincts the whole time. I'm sure. So. Yeah, I'm sure That's... he was scared to have all that money on the line because the more money there is, yeah. the less you have to do with it. So yeah. He, That's... yeah. That's true. That's true. So I think was... we could still put our trust in Frank Oz. Yeah, I don't think it was entirely his fault, but. Yeah, not I'm, I can't recommend it to anyone. It's kind of a waste of time. So yeah, don't bother. Uh, Colin, what did you think? Well, I mean, okay. So like I said, it's a first time watch. So I went into this with a heavy bias. I guess is what I'm saying. It's like <laughs> I am a big fan of the original movie. I think the for the the original is one of those like uh, movies of like the perfectly cranked tension right and the mystery mm -hmm. and then the shock and horror you know uh, a paranoid movie from the 1970s where everybody was very paranoid and recently if you want to see like and i'm surprised nobody mentioned it but if you want to see like a good version an updated version of this type of paranoid thriller it's get out from a couple years ago oh yeah uh, and that sure. doesn't go the same way but it it has that i mean it is basically today's stepford wives um mm -hmm. the uh so I mean, like, okay, all that being said, that's what I, those are the ones I like. It's like, so you go into this going like, well, the, the scenes are still there. You know, the one girl up the, the, they're listening to the girl upstairs having sex with her husband and, oh, you're the King Harold or whatever, you know, uh, it was like, okay, some of the, the tent pole scenes are here, but like how we got to them and the motivations and the characters are all jumbled, scrambled. I don't feel a buy-in. I don't understand anybody's uh, um, motivations because they just they show up and tell you what they are like in the scene where it's happening you don't get a sense for who the people are leading up to it and i assume they have something to do with the post uh you know tinkering where they must have chopped all those scenes out you know to make it move faster or whatever uh this was a horrible 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 movie i hated it hated it almost as much as i hated <laughs> urban legends which was one of the worst movies that we've ever seen on the saturday night freak show this isn't a saturday night freak show movie this is a major hollywood mainstream big budget you know piece of shit and uh <laughs> yeah no you should run away but go see go see the stepford children no okay go see uh <laughs> the that you should check out the original Stefford Wives. Uh, that's a stone cold classic. Uh, this movie's a piece of shit. Sean, what do you think of Stefford Wives, the remake? Stefford Wives, the remake. Um, I'm not going to say I hate this movie, 
because I don't want to have an active relationship with this movie. So I'm just going to say that I never want to see this movie again. And we're going to leave it at that. Now, there are like, when I said seconds of hilariousness, I meant it. Like five total from this movie. Uh, there's a couple of one-liners. I think John Lovett says something that was funny. Uh, a couple throwaway moments, and that's it. Other than that, this was kind of excruciating. So I really do not like this movie. I think uh, that's a good word. Not only what the, excruciating. There you it's, go. It's, it's yeah. kind of excruciating um, because not only was it like it got fucked up behind the scenes and that shows in this movie, but even the the like the what were the taste of the times like kind of where we at where we were at in 2004 like if this is a product of that of like i hate it like we were not in a good position america what was wrong with you that we were producing movies like this um I, yeah it's just i, I hate hate I, I don't i don't like this movie i wouldn't recommend this to anybody no way uh go watch the original which is uh, a goddamn stone cold classic especially in comparison to this one um stay far away from stepford wives please um michaela <laughs> why <laughs> why why i feel like What's, there are, are some okay? things i feel like there are some things that are just our duty you know like it's <laughs> we might not like it but it is our duty to do it i you say know? that too and i get yelled at so much i feel like i'm getting yelled at right now so i think yeah, we're even it, the standard applies okay. <laughs> yeah shame uh, yeah shame um, shame Shame. Shame. I'm, I'd rather watch you can shame me all you want. I'm not dying on this hill. <laughs> I, I didn't say I brought this movie because I liked it. Never once said that. Um, I just want to start off by saying, like, when I see Matthew Broderick is involved in something, that is a major red flag for me. Like, I really don't like this guy. I feel like he's been coasting on Ferris Bueller his whole life. Like, I, I just <laughs> feel like, like, but it's not a hate. It's more just like. I like sigh and roll my eyes. Like really you couldn't get someone that has like a personality, you know? Um, but there is this review of a play he did uh, uh, like six or seven years ago that I think about all the time because it perfectly sums up my feelings for Matthew Broderick. So I'm just going to read like a small clip of it. Cause it's like the most savage review of his acting I've ever heard in my life. So this is by David Cote for Time Out about the play. It's only a play. And he goes, and then there's Broderick, who for years has been turning in robotic, chirpy performances that have nothing to do with the character he's playing or the show he's in. It's just more lifeless iterations on Leopold Bloom. Broderick doesn't act so much as have his Madame Tussauds likeness wheeled on stage with hidden speakers. <laughs> <laughs> That's how I feel about the man. So I feel like ever That's since he solid. killed those people in that car crash in Ireland, his soul got sucked out of his body and we have a husk of a man. Why he's Maybe he got... Maybe he's a stepford husband. Maybe that was it. Oh, but it doesn't. You crafty minx, you. <laughs> you know, this movie, if it wanted to say anything, it could say, you know, there's this big undercurrent of misogyny that's always been a part of American culture. It could say that, you know, there's this fear of suburbia and that the American dream has become this, like, manufactured kind of sterile thing. There's all these things this movie could say, but it says be crazy and like then ends and that's it so like that's all <laughs> it really has to say so it's not worth watching because it is a complete wasted opportunity to be satirical to make a commentary to to just literally do anything to yeah. say anything to literally say anything and it doesn't say anything yeah. and on top of that it's not funny and it's not scary and like Colin said, Get Out is is the better remake of this movie. Yeah, so this movie is that. a lot like this movie is a lot like Matthew Broderick. It doesn't have a personality. Exactly. Like which, like so, it seems like he should be perfect for this movie, and yet it still doesn't work. You know? Yeah. Um, no, don't watch it. It's a terrible movie. Like I said, I brought it because I feel like it was something that there'd be a lot of discussion around, and I think I was right. So, um, not a good movie. Go watch the original. That is a classic, and it is a legitimately like tense thriller. So um, mm -hmm. this isn't funny. It isn't scary. It isn't anything. It's just a bunch of nothing. So don't watch it. Pass. We're just we're just doing it for you, dear Brailler. I want to make sure that you don't have to do this stuff. <laughs> so that's why we do what we do. That's yeah, why. That's right. We fell on the grenade. We took Two. one for the yeah. 
for all of humanity out there. That's what we do. That's our I mean, solid really duty is. here at the Saturday Night Freak Show. All right. Well, that uh, that's a solid pass from all four of us then. Um, <laughs> that's a surprise. Um, so next week, we're going to watch a movie that's chosen by... Colin. Do you think that's what happened to everybody else who was a cast member on this show? They all fell on their grenades and just died. <laughs> that's why That's why we've gotten to where we are now. Yeah. Colin, what are we watching next week? Next week, we're going to indulge my love of the DC comic superheroes. We're going to watch Wes Craven's Swamp Thing. All right. Uh, <laughs> I know. I had to draw that one out oh. just to see the faces. Good, <laughs> I was good, like, wait, good what? Setup, what? Colin. I was <laughs> like, if he <laughs> says Aquaman or Justice League, like... Sorry, I'm gonna He's get you back. Has jumped the shark <laughs> for Stafford Wives with Justice League. We're gonna watch all four hours of it next week. On the, no, sorry, seriously, uh, Swamp Thing. Uh, there you uh, go, Travis. Travis is back. Tom's been, <laughs> been possessed by Travis. And our 12-hour anal- analysis of a four-hour movie. Yeah, it would, it would be. It would be three hours. Be. Hour. <laughs> well, Colin, Colin, you'd have to put 10 percent of the movie of us at like half speed talking in slow mo. Yeah, uh, true. So. That's, that's true. Yeah, we, we we could make it 12 hours. No problem. All right. <laughs> so, just so you're not confused, it's Swamp Thing next week. <laughs> swamp Thing on the yes. Saturday Night Freak Show. And until then, ladies and germs, the basement is going dark. <laughs>